Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Here we are another Monday with another interesting guest and subject. As you all know, the Hawaii State Legislature just adjourned its 2019 session last week Thursday. So I have with me this afternoon Colin Moore, the Director of Public Policy at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. So we are, uh, you know, he is our, what, our university expert. I suppose so. Well, it's a <laughs> pleasure to be here. Here you are. So we're going to talk about this uh, recently and the legislature. But first of all, uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you've Thank been here you. before. And as usual, our listeners have enjoyed your wisdom. So we're going to give them another shot. I'm excited. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Well, let, but before we, we, you know, we get to a lot of meat, let, let's start with the uh, with dessert. Uh, now, as I understand it, the, the, there's this tradition that's evolved at, at the at the legislature where, uh, well, back in my day, back a long time ago, we used to do our own Hawaii aloha. You know, the house did it, and the oh. Senate did it, but over the years, they've evolved this idea of all coming together mm -hmm. and doing it as, you know, one massive entity. And yet this year, this year apparently, the, the Senate the leadership anyway moved over to the House and tried to get in and they couldn't get the... No the door was to, locked. Uh, the <laughs> they were locked out. They went home already. So yeah. uh, what have you heard? I mean, was that deliberate or was that... Uh, or it, I don't know if it was deliberate, but the, the relations between the Senate and the House aren't so good. They weren't so good this session. Really? Partly because the Senate leadership was incredibly frustrated because the House didn't send people to conference committee. I mean, they, they, they used this... Uh, hardball tactic of refusing to send representatives so the senate was forced to either pass the bill in the house, version, the house, the house version. version of that bill yeah. or nothing at all um, and, and the senate leadership was extremely uh angry about that in fact uh, senator english had some some choice words to say on on hawaii public radio about it he was really frustrated uh, that the house wasn't sending representatives to no, conference but the, but the speaker the speaker uh, I, I appoints the conferees. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least that's the nominal power of the speaker. And so the, he, he, he wouldn't appoint the, nom, uh, the conferees, or the conferees just, as a tactic, just refused to they show weren't, up. They weren't being appointed, and, and, they, uh, and so there wasn't anyone to negotiate with. Um, and that was really frustrating to, to the Senate. Now, as I, I understand, they weren't even appointed. Um, oh really? Now, maybe maybe there are some. I, it may be a varied by bill. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but but that's what I've heard. Um, and so when the senators went over this time to sing, they found that they were locked out. And who knows if that was on purpose or not? <laughs> well, I'm sure that we got people saying that it was. It, yeah. Right? I mean, it, but but nobody knows for sure. And it sort of is the. Uh, well, the icing on the cake, you know, they, they get locked out. Exactly. It's the perfect so, metaphor for the session. Right. <laughs> so they're not exactly standing around doing Hawaii alone. No. So, okay. So the session ends with its usual faux pas, right? I mean, That's the door right. was locked. And, 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 and now let's talk about what they accomplished. Now, in the beginning of the session, there was a lot of talk about, uh, well, I guess illegal rentals. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. So all the all the Airbnb illegal renters, vacation rentals, and maybe maybe we can come back to that because it, at the start of the session, people did think they were going to deal with that. But if you if you think back to what people made a big deal about and what Governor Ige made as his priorities in the state of the state were things like early childhood education, and we've Absolutely. been working on this for right. years here. Right. Governor Abercrombie worked right. on it. We're one, of, you know, we're one of the few blue states that doesn't have it. Even Oklahoma has universal pre-K education. So Governor Ige wanted to make that a priority. Um, and then he had this really innovative and, and pretty radical housing policy where there was going to be condos built on state land with 99-year leases, and this was going to make a dent in, in the, our affordable housing crisis, sort of based on what they've done so in So both of these programs were touted by the... Top, By the Ige administration. Ige administration. He just won re-election. If I remember correctly, they, they also seem to have been at least uh, 
given some verbal support by the leadership of both houses. Absolutely. Particularly, the, you know, the other thing which we'll talk about too, minimum wage. Everyone was talking about that. Senate President Ron Kochi said it was a priority. Um, and, and early childhood education. You're right. Maybe the support might have been a little softer for, uh, for the housing program, but the champion of that was Senator Stanley Chang. So it had some legislative support for sure. But the housing, that, that really didn't go anywhere. Early childhood education, a little bit of money, but just to build, uh, build it in 10 more classrooms. I and mean, of course, minimum wage failed, which I know is a disappointment to a lot of people. But, but what's the why behind all of this? You know, that's, that's a great question. So the first, for the housing issue, I think it was just too radical. I mean, this, the, the Hawaii legislature is a, a, a cautious group of people. Yeah, it's amazing because, you know, oh boy, where do we start with yeah. that? Because, you know. Was it always that way? Was it that way well, when you were? Well, actually, we were, the, the legislature were a bunch of radical conservatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, in personal, you know, in some respects. The people that came out of the uh, 442nd Revolution and the Democratic Revolution and the rest of it, in some respects, were, were, were very, uh, from very traditional backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But uh, politically speaking, they, they were revolutionary. I mean, Hawaii was, you know, the first state in the nation for doing this and the first state in Absolutely. the nation for doing that. You got universal uh, health care. Health care. You got. Um, workers' compensation, First all of these things. legalize abortion. Uh, legalize abortion. All, and all of a sudden, you know, as their grandchildren, at least uh, metaphorically speaking, start to uh, take their, their seats in the legislature, it's not the same. I mean, yeah. they may be coming from less traditional backgrounds, but their politics have gotten very mm -hmm. uh, conservative. I, I don't know what's happening. I think I think that's right. I think it's that they, they're they're. It's not that they're ideologically conservative, right? But it's that they're 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 really cautious. I think they don't want to do anything that would upset. Well, there's this whole thing about not being the one that will get caught. Exactly. Mistake, no one you know. no one wants to make a mistake. No one wants to uh, to do anything out of the ordinary. And so then the easiest solution when there's a tough problem is to just not do anything, which they've been pretty good at. Or to do something that is, you know, pie in the sky and call it a great victory. I exactly. mean, we, we, we did not pie in the sky. I shouldn't <laughs> say that. But uh, universally, you know, because uh, they did pass. This legislature did pass, for example, all mail and voting. Sure. And I uh, guess for the next election. Mm -hmm, 2020. That's right. So Very the guys, fast. so we are trusting the people who couldn't pull off the last election well to go out and completely redo the system in you're, two you're years. You're saying you don't have a lot of faith in our No, 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 I, you know, I, 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 I'm a fan. I am a fan of the idea that the elections uh, should remain with, should have remained with the lieutenant Well, that's governor. you, that, when you were lieutenant governor, yeah. that's how it worked, right? Because I want you, I want to know, I want, when the election is happening, I want to be, I want there to be someone who's sweating blood and tears, you know, just sweating blood that everything will go perfect, <laughs> as opposed to people who are, you know, in a sense, uh, bureaucrats. Sure, sure, exactly. You know, just bureaucrats. Now, I know the bureaucrats like the fact that they're bureaucrats, and everybody else likes that. I mean, it's, it is smacks of professionalism. Mm -hmm. But when nobody's uh, sweating that the ballots were accurately counted, that the laws were taken... You know, I mean, you're sitting as lieutenant governor, and, and you're in charge of elections and nothing else, essentially. You, you sort of know that your whole re-election rises and falls on some, somebody in the chain making a stupid mistake. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I prefer that system. But anyway, they had a chance to do something radical about housing, and they didn't do it. Was there a lot of opposition to it? Or? There wasn't so much opposition. I think there were, it just never was given a chance. I mean, it got, it got a lot of attention, but and there were a couple of hearings, but that, that was sort of it. I mean, I think it was just thought of as too, too much too soon. And I know that there is this study group that's going to Singapore this summer to, hmm. to explore these options. Go see the crazy rich Asians. Yeah, right, right. exactly. <laughs> I want to see that hotel in Singapore right. where... Oh, know, yeah, the floating boat hotel. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> so they're going to Singapore, they're going to learn... 
And it's ironic, isn't it? I mean, people used to come to America to steal our, uh, you know, the way we make cars and everything else. And now, now we have to go there and, and find out how they build houses. Exactly. You know? It's going to be it's going to be tough to bring that model over here, though. I mean, one of the I mean, first, Singapore isn't a democracy. We should be real clear on that. Right. Um, and the second thing is their their construction costs are a lot lower. And that's one of the reasons we have such a challenge building affordable housing. But when everybody wants to pass minimum wage, why didn't it pass? You know, that that to me is really is really discouraging. Um, and, you know, the, the claim was that there were some legal questions about whether or not uh, they could set the minimum wage at 15, but then make it 13 for employers who provided uh, health care for their employees. Um, and, and so there were concerns that there might be a legal challenge um, around those issues. But that was really just the excuse. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think they they heard a lot from small businesses that are already struggling, that were worried they weren't going to be able to. Uh, well, to, I know, to, I know, I know that. a number of small businesses who, you know, really uh, were uh, adamantly opposed to absolutely, to their, especially restaurants. Yes, the, the restaurant industry tends to be the most vocal about that because their profit margins aren't too big to be. And because with, they and, know that their employees make tips. Right. Right. So assuming that. You know, that's all kosher and being done correctly. Uh, it, it's, uh, I can see where, you know, for, for that group of people, they, there is actually uh, another way to make money. It, it, it's not dependent on your, on your, uh, your salary. I, I'm, when we, I remember when we, when we were involved, when I was involved with hotel negotiations, mm -hmm. the lowest paid person in the hierarchy of hotel employees mm -hmm. uh, actually ma and ended up making the most money. Mm -hmm. And the lowest paid person uh, was the, the doorman. Oh, because of the, the tips. Yeah, yeah, the doorman that was the most prized job in the entire, uh, you know, uh, employee hierarchy <laughs> right. uh, outside of management. And those, in fact, I know a lot of uh, doormen who would refuse management jobs so that they could get paid minimum wage, opening doors nice. for people. And every time they did that, you know, they would get bucks. a tip. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I can see where there are industries that made, but still, still, it was a priority. Everybody acknowledged, and 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 I I, I can't well. I don't know. I, 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 maybe the lobby, maybe the lobby against them raising the minimum wage is stronger than we think. And I think they feel like they have some more time. I mean, that they this is something they can address. Yeah, except next you're session, the person but, getting paid. Right. If you're the minimum wage person, this isn't so great for you. And and uh, you know, all of these. You know, to me, the strange thing too is all of the issues that came up could have been anticipated ahead of time, you know, that there was going to be this issue about employers who pay health insurance. There was going to be this issue where they might want to try to give a tax break, a little tax credit to small businesses to help them absorb the cost. So it's not as if these were unanticipated issues. I, I sort of think that they decided they weren't going to uh, deal yeah, with this, this like session from the beginning. I, you know, it, it's a, this is a very interesting session. Because there were a number of issues that seemed like they were, uh, like there was an invisible hand, to quote uh, Adam Smith. Except this may be a negative one, or maybe a good one, depending on your point of view. An invisible hand, like guiding the machinations, mm -hmm. the political uh, movements of the legislature, you know, and uh, not necessarily the same hand, but it. There seem to be a, a lot of uh, uh, undercurrent. Yeah, you know, a lot of, most of the tax bills failed. I mean, the, the increase in the GET to fund the DOE and UH, even the cigarette tax bill failed. And usually they can, uh, you know, they go after smokers. That's usually a pretty easy sell. But but that didn't happen. A lot of these, um, a lot of these breaks for working families didn't pass. Increasing the food credit, right. increasing the. The, um, the renter's credit. So here we are, you know, uh, uh, the democratic, most democratic legislature in the country acting like uh, we could have been North Carolina, you know, a little bit more <laughs> yeah. progressive in the South. But <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a short commercial break and come back and we're going to start picking the brains of the University of Hawaii Policy, Public Policy Center.
Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Lauren Pear, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee, and today we're uh, we're doing our recap of the 2019 legislative session with uh, the director of the Public Policy Center at the University of Hawaii, Colin Moore. So, Colin, we were just uh, before the break talking about the fact that a lot of the uh, initiatives that would have helped. The individual families with their tax code and giving them some, not, none of that passed. Right? None of that passed. So we talked about this food tax credit, a renter's credit, a whole lot of these things to cut folks' taxes a bit because we know that our GET ends up being a really regressive tax system because yes, everything is yes. taxed. So it really hurts po poor folks a lot. Um, and, and this didn't pass. And you know, one, one thing I want to point out, I mean, this along with the housing bills, all of these cost of living issues, for the most part, yeah. See, didn't I'm pass. saying these, these, these are cost of, and, and that was the big thing. The big you, thing. Yeah. Every politician that I know, uh, you know, maybe there might be one legislator someplace that I, uh, you know, haven't. But almost every one of them talk about the need to do something about the cost of living. And the that's, cost of living. and this is because this is reflected in the polling. Eighty percent of people say that it's the cost of living is their number one concern. There's a there's a poll that showed, and this to me was pretty shocking, forty five percent of people in this state have considered leaving because of the cost of living. Yeah, I think that's the conversation. Yeah. When you ask people why are you going to Vegas, nobody's going right. to say because I want to play at the you know at the California hotel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, every every weekend, what they're going to say is because I can buy a cheaper house. Exactly. I, can, I, I you know I can get a job and live with the same salary I'm making here. And so you know this then we have this extraordinary situation here where you know this is a, a beautiful place to live with a, a strong economy and yet. Hawaii's population has decreased for two years in a row. Yeah, which is very, very unusual. Yeah. And, um, you know, okay, and then so, but uh, what, well, I, you know, you look at the minimum wage uh, issue and it can go both ways. I mean, if you're a small business person, not passing minimum wage was a victory for fighting the cost of living. But on the other hand, if you had to earn that's right. Uh, living here, you know, that meant that you keep uh, keep being under the underwater. Yeah, right? or you've got to have a couple of jobs because even I mean, the, from what I understand, the calculation is seventeen dollars actually would get you to be about a living wage, and and even fifteen going up to that wouldn't quite cut it. Um, but it's a lot better than ten ten, which it is right now. Yeah, and then well, let me ask you a, a question though. They did raise the the tax on, and despite formidable opposition, I mean, in fact, I still heard the the I was listening to Hawaiian Kind Radio this morning, and that's a tip if anybody's, and uh, because they're still playing the. Uh, Adver ad advertisements against oh the REITs the raising the tax on REITs yeah that so that that was a little surprising I didn't I didn't I didn't think that was going to go through do you think it had anything to do with the fact that a lot of these REITs used to be Hawaii corporations that paid taxes that you know. Uh, transitioned into REIT so they could avoid paying the same tax? I think that's exactly it. So there's not a lot of political sympathy for, you know, the the, the now REITs that you stayed you know, at one day were a part of the big five and have yeah. reinvented themselves. I mean, they're not a very politically sympathetic group. And so I think that 
that was a little less risky. But they also tend to have pretty powerful lobbyists. And this is, this is unique in the United States. I, I think we're the first state to have a to uh, tax REITs this way. Well, yeah, because the, the whole idea of a REIT was to have a vehicle that would avoid corporate taxation, and not personal tax, uh, tax, income tax, but corporate. Right, exactly. And, and so here, you know, people are, well, we're now taxing REITs in Hawaii, so we'll see whether all the dooms they... Predictions, predictions come to pass. Come to pass. <laughs> or whether it even makes a yeah. difference if it did. Now... On the other hand, one major cost of living factor in Hawaii uh, is the cost of energy. So did, have, did the legislature do anything uh, in that respect? As far as I know, there wasn't any big, uh, big energy-related bill this year. I mean, they still have these clean energy goals that, um, that they've been moving forward with. But in terms of reducing the cost of energy, um, this this wasn't really a session that, that yeah I mean nobody really talks about it but I, you know I just came back from Washington State and I got to tell you because I'm involved with a company up there it makes a big difference I mean you're, there are some things in Hawaii that you know land for example is going all it's going it's scarce mm -hmm. so no matter what we probably be on the more expensive. Um, side of the con continuum. But when you, with the company that, uh, that I was working with, got charged three cents an hour for yeah. power, and if we bought that company back to yeah. Hawaii, which is what I would love to do, um, we would have to pay 38 cents a kilowatt hour. And I'm thinking to, I mean, we can't do it. It's all about hydropower in Washington State. Well, right? yeah, that's it's, it's it cheap. It, yeah. It, there is cheap power, and one of the things that's happening in Hawaii, as a matter of public policy, is the divide between those that can afford to buy cheap power mm -hmm. up front and those that get stuck that's after important. everybody else leaves. Yeah, you know? and so I don't know whether things people are doing anything about it, but the other area which I thought. You know, uh, the legislature would act, which apparently they didn't, is in the uh, illegal rentals. That's right. So they, they, um, they basically the legislature decided to, to take the money but not worry that most of that money was coming from illegal rentals. Yeah, and that, they, they set it up so that uh, the, uh, the what, Airbob? And Airbnb and, and HomeAway, these big companies, yeah. What they, they would have to collect the taxes. Yeah. They, you know, have we done that for Amazon and the rest of I mean, I, I remember when uh, Councilwoman Fukunaga was in the, in the uh, state senate. That, that was her perennial bill every mm -hmm. year was to collect taxes off of uh, internet sales. We're, we're doing that now. That actually is a bill that passed this session. It, it got a Finally. little less attention, yeah. But companies, I think, that do more than $100,000 of business in Hawaii now will, will pay GET taxes on online sales. Is that how the uh, Air, Air Bob thing will work? No, or, that's, uh, that's very different. Because I mean, well, not very different, but I think a little different because the, the issue there is the Airbnb companies essentially want to say, we're not going to give you data on who and where these Airbnbs are. Trust us, we'll collect the taxes and we'll write a, a check to the state, which sounds like it'll be about $46 million. The trouble with for a lot of senators was that this makes it look like the state of Hawaii is complicit in breaking its own laws because it knows that a lot of that money is coming from rentals that that shouldn't exist to begin with, or are, are illegal according to city and county regulations. And the legislature came back and said, look, this isn't a state problem, this is a city and county problem, talk to the council. Um, they have these regulations, they should enforce them. Um, the, the real trouble here, I think, though, is that, and everyone knows this, in some ways the state has become a bit addicted to Airbnb because we've gone from 8 million tourists to 10 million tourists. Yeah, we sort of need the housing. Those right? 2 million extra people are staying in Airbnbs, yeah. Yeah, but you know, uh, yeah, so we, you know, in terms of, I, well, I come, as I told you, from the uh, Lee Catalina, <laughs> you know, way of thinking, which is people weren't interested. If you ask the public, they're not interested in how much money your budget, the budget got right. from these illegal rentals. They wanted to stop. 
Well, they, they're worried it's destroying their neighborhoods. And if you go to Kailua, you can you can see the effects of that. And, oh, yeah. Or it's, uh, it's, it's extraordinary. Well, I went up to see uh, former president, uh, Senate President Dick, Dickie Wong in, in Paua. Oh, yeah. So, you know, right up in Paua, which is a basic family neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thought that it would ever become a tourist haven right. is like, uh, I don't think that entered anybody's mind. So I went up to see him. He's bedridden, unfortunately, and isn't able to get around. But when, uh, right next to his house, across the street, were um, these two huge places. Oh, the monster houses. Yeah, and they had something like... Uh, 24 bedrooms and you know it was it's like that and these are my 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 um, I guess orientation to monster houses mm -hmm. and, and I mean what, what do you you got every room is a self-sufficient unit with its own bathroom and I guess not technically a kitchen because it's a hot wave or a microwave. Oh, right, yeah. A hot plate, the old, like the old hot plate type thing, you know, <laughs> and, and you got it and so it's not completely, you know, you can't do it. But, uh, and, and I'm thinking to myself, if the president was still functioning, I, I think we would have stopped this. Yeah. You know? Well, and this is an example of what happens when you keep kicking the can down the road. People knew this was going to become an issue 10 years ago or more, uh, but they never really got together with the city and county to, to regulate it properly. And so now it's exploded. It's so big. It's hard to imagine how you do it. Do you think this is going it? to be an issue for the next, man, the next memorial campaign? Oh, absolutely. My, all of this stuff. This is what people are furious about. So if I, were, if I was a mayor right now and I wanted to run for, a higher, for another office, I would be taking care of this problem. And if I was a councilman or any other politician planning to run for mayor, uh, one of the questions you might get asked on the trail is, uh, what's your credentials for dealing with this problem? I think that's exactly right. This, this along with rail, because this is something people can really understand. You're right, these obscure financial issues and how much tax money the state is taking in, that, that's a little more difficult, but this really hits people in the yeah, gut. And, you know, and, and ultimately, I think Lee uh, Cataluna is right. I mean, that's not really the issue for people to yeah. get out of it. Well, I got to tell you, though, it was an interesting session. It was an interesting session where because it seemed that there was, uh, it seemed like we had all the momentum going for progressive issues and very few of them passed. Exactly. And so then the question is, so what, how are, are, are they, are they progressive Democrats? I mean, they, they like to, they like to use that rhetoric and so does the governor. So what's holding them back? There's only one Republican in the state Senate. It's yeah, not an opposition I, you know, party. It's, uh, it's... <laughs> Well, it's going to be our challenge. Yeah. We've got nine months to uh, look for a solution and see what happens in 2020, our new upcoming legislative session. I want to thank our guest this afternoon, Colin. Thank you so My much pleasure. for being here. It's always fun to join you to get your insight on our politics, public policy in Hawaii. So we'll come back in two weeks. Aloha, everyone.